Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we're going to be looking at Darksiders The War Mastered Edition. Now THQ might not be the same company that I knew growing up, but I'll tell you one thing. They are targeting the Switch in a big way. Moreover, they are generally putting out solid ports that have some real care and attention taken over them. Darksiders is an absolute failure. April Fools. Darksiders is a huge name in the industry, but a game series like I say I've never touched, not once on any platform. It's a rare thing these days to discover a series beloved by others. Most recently The Great Hollow Knight was my late arrival to the party. Well here we are again on similar ground as I find myself walking up the driveway to the Darksiders bash. Everyone's already three sheets to the wind and dancing on the tables. Is it overrated? Let's find out. You play as War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse who is suspected of having gone rogue. Quickly brought to the hill by the forces of the underworld, he claims he was not acting of his own volition but was in fact summoned. He is then restored to life with a guide come jailer of sorts watching over him as he aims to rectify the situation. The standout for me in terms of story are some of the vocal performances, which are from some pretty famous names. You so much as Billy can be. And the council will end you, both of you! Let's lay down a few ground rules. Until this is over, you're a dog on a leash. I say bark, you bark. They aren't exceptional on their own, bar perhaps one or two late game ones, which I won't spoil, but they all work well together to create a cohesive and believable world. Invariably, it is these who will stick with you far beyond the end credits of the game. Without sounding like a 10 year old, the cinematic storytelling is just really cool. Coming across the denizens of hell battling with hulking angelic forms all framed against the dilapidated city is excellent. <laughs> I personally would have thrown even more discoverable lore into the world, but this feels like a place that could exist in some fantasy vision of the future. As one last aside, there is a good ratio of cutscene to gameplay here as well. I also recently started the excellent Bayonetta series on Switch, and while I love it, it can get super cutscene heavy. Overall for me, the story of Darksiders is well handled, while not being exceptional. It scores 18 out of 20. Now I may get shot for making this comparison, so I have my comment defences ready, but am I the only person who feels there is quite a bit of Zelda to this gameplay? It's as if Zelda and God of War had a baby and out pop Darksiders. Let me explain why. Much of the game is fighting the minions of either heaven or hell, and the combat system is actually rather simple. You have your basic attack, which can be quite easily spammed early on to reap some satisfying demonic or angelic pulp, but you soon learn the lock-on, evade and latter counter moves. Add to this, once an enemy has been suitably softened up, and by softened up I mean you've beaten them to within an inch of their life and they are swaying Mortal Kombat style, waiting for the friend or finisher. You can hold a button which triggers a suitably visceral finishing move. During this, you can't be touched, so using it tactically in large groups can save you from a few cheeky enemy backstabs. Now that being said, it does get a little wearisome with enemies that almost require you to use this to take them down and the visual repetition of the same move over and over was certainly not lost on me. You have a slew of alternative attacks which require combinations of the triggers and A, B, X and Y, as well as the ability to shift into a form of pure rage, I know how it feels, if you have the prerequisites to do so. Which was a wise decision to avoid its overuse. With the lock-on mechanic in full effect, everything feels well under your control. You can manually aim the latter crossblade to trigger certain things and this was a breath of the wild fresh air. <coughs> and a real link to the past games I've played. Ooh. Your beginning abilities and skills are all upgradable through an early character you meet and spending the souls you've acquired works, but also this pool can be spent to purchase new weapons, enhancements and abilities of which you will find many. Another nod of appreciation from me comes from the weapons being good for certain situations, like a wider attack pattern for groups versus higher base damage. There are several points in each stage where you will come face to face with some hideous monstrosity baying to part you with your precious life juice, which is shown 
up there. After losing a bar, you will lose a full section of the smaller one. Tell me that isn't like Zelda, with each heart acting as its own bar of sorts. Section boss fights serve to break up a stage and are far more intense than the smaller grunts. Here you will need to use all your abilities, particularly the evade and latter counter moves effectively. One more touch of appreciation comes from me that they didn't make the counter move an insta kill like the early Assassin's Creed games, opting for a more Batman approach, but much more challenging as you are relying on visual cues alone. Tougher enemies will have unique executions tied to them, bringing in a suitably crunchy ending reward for your efforts. It isn't a particular difficult game for anyone with even a little experience in the action-adventure genre. The performance mode is almost essential for optimal play though, which I'll talk about in the next sections. When you do die, you respawn quite close by, so you never really feel overly punished. Now back to Zelda for a moment, you often enter areas which are decked out exactly like a dungeon. Find a map, check, discover bombs to clear paths, check, and push the block to unlock a new area which even has its own version of the secret discovery jingle from the earlier Zelda titles. Now don't get me wrong, this is probably one of the biggest compliments I could pay the game, as it makes every element its own. Platforming is superior in my opinion, with sensible choices to keep the pacing and flow of the game and puzzles are generally on the light side, carry this there or push this block. Sprinkle in a few arena style fights whereby you must dispose of enemies in a certain way and time limit and you feel a constant reward for your efforts. Who needs a hand glider when you've got an angel griffin or whatever this winged beast is? Yes, you get to mount a few different beasties along your journey and despite being on rails, these sections aren't overly drawn out and I enjoyed them a lot. So let's recap. Great combat, while being a touch more simple than some titles, allows for skillful play via upgrades as you progress. Difficulty is on point and progression ticks along nicely. There are some slightly filler-like sections early on, but to be honest these are just designed really to teach you how to play the game. Excellent boss fights and use of the environment throughout elevates it. Tossing a car into the face of a giant angry demon feels wonderful on the Nintendo Switch. Gameplay scores 19 out of 20. Visually, Darksiders War Mastered Edition on the Switch is more akin to the Nintendo Wii U version. While it has all the pretty visual tweaks such as higher textures and a native or near native resolution, unlike the PS4 and Xbox versions, it runs at 30 frames per second with these on. Thankfully, the developers saw fit to give Switch players the option to enable performance mode. Resolution and textures suffer to a small degree, but in my opinion is more than made up for by the slick 60 frames per second experience that you can then enjoy. The feeling is night and day when switched on the fly and combat, although it wasn't bad at 30 frames a second, is now a ballet of death covered in the silkiest of silk. It's the only way to go in my opinion unless you're just in the market for some screenshots. Both screen captures and recording are supported as well for those people interested. Audio is also impressive. With the orchestrated score courtesy of some pretty big names in the industry, the perfect accompaniment to the on-screen carnage. Not having owned a 10 foot long demon possessed sword myself, I can't verify its sound effects are 100% accurate, but boy do they sound how I would imagine. Voices as mentioned are good and from some very famous names. My only gripe and possibly one most people wouldn't notice are some of the ambient sounds feeling a little lacking. It's not a huge issue and there are times when it is spot on, but it can on rare occasions detract from the overall immersion. Visuals have aged very well. In docked and handheld they look fantastic in quality mode and good in performance mode. Portable is equally impressive, and in performance mode you don't notice the visual downgrade nearly as much. Load times are excellent, despite some annoying old school methods to hide these. Door animations anyone? Visual score 17 out of 20, and the wonderful audio scores 18 out of 20. The game costs $29.99 and I believe $24.99 in the UK but don't hold me to that because for some reason I cannot find a UK price. What I did find though was the UK physical price and that was $24.85. 
The core game will take you from 18 to 25 hours depending on how much treasure hunting you do. There are a ton of chests and hidden items littered throughout the world. If you're new to the series, it's the perfect experience to take on the go with a real pick up and play quality then slamming it into the dock to finish at home is the obvious delight provided by the Switch. You feel like you're getting a game that THQ have spent time to get right on Nintendo's new console and bar minor stutters in some areas, they've managed to deliver just that. All this being said, you're going to be paying a premium for the experience on Switch and quite a premium by today's prices. If you're buying for the mobility then crack on. However, if you do own any other console then you can save yourself a good chunk of change by purchasing an arguably superior PS4 or Xbox version at around half the price. Now I fall in the mobile Switch user niche and for me it's worth that extra price. Overall I give value 16 out of 20. Obviously the prices I've stated on the other systems were not the at launch price but still feels like it might be a factor for some people. I have had an absolute blast finally joining the rest of the world and playing Darksiders. I most definitely see what all the fuss is about. A Zelda-like experience with some environmental puzzles and a vastly superior combat experience is just what the Doctor ordered. It scores a switch-up score of 88%. Top draw. This would be a definite pickup for my money, particularly for physical collectors. Thanks so much to our Patreons and to all of the new subscribers. You guys make this channel what it is, and for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!